All right, we'll try this one more time. Apologies for the interruption, trying to make certain everything is working where it needs to be done and everything else taking place. So as of right now, we again see the potential for some uh, quiet conditions in and around the Mid-South area for tonight. If you have any plans for outdoors, uh, we'll continue again to see some activity uh, into and around the area where it comes to rainfall tomorrow, but just not really seeing that much of anything going on uh, at this point in time for the time being for right now. A lot of changes taking place with our new storm system back to the north of us and we'll talk more about what that looks like coming up here uh, in just a little while with that new storm system coming on through we could begin to see again uh, the possibility some pretty cold conditions north of us and some of that cold air is going to be making its way into the mid-south area and that is going to be a little bit on the chilly side as we get into the course of the rest of the next couple of days so if you have any plans for that please again address those before you head out the door pretty soon again so far looking pretty good in the Mid-South area for now, but we continue again to see the potential for some more problems out there uh, as we get into the course of the rest of the next couple of days. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This is our live webcast from somewhere in and around the area of Memphis, Tennessee. Again, looking at the possibility of some fairly chilly conditions out across much of the area into the weekend, but that's where we're going to be seeing, again, the uh, major overall problems for right now for the forecast into the weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. In the meantime, get comfortable. It is decently comfortable out here for right now. Again, got the jacket on tonight. Again, not doing too bad for outside, mainly to ward off any mosquitoes. Warm enough today to give us some decent mosquitoes out there. Again, Again, for a little while with temperatures back into around the lower 80s in parts of the Mid-South area. And we'll continue again to see some fairly dry conditions into the rest of the evening tonight. But tomorrow, that could be a much different story. And we'll be talking more about that coming up here uh, in just a little while. So if you have any concerns about the weather anything else going on, please drop me a line and let me know. We'd love to know what you're thinking about and what all we can do to keep you updated as to what's going on out there. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's happening in and around the area with the forecast. Again, so far pretty quiet across much of the area. And looking again at the moon setting over the western horizon for tonight in and around the area of Germantown City Hall camera and seeing again a little bit less in the way of cloud cover for right now but we may see more possible problems of that as we get into the course of the rest of the day as we go into tomorrow but we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little while. Currently dry in the Mid-South area and should be staying that way again for tonight. Not seeing anything on radar nor are we really expecting to get anything into tonight. But tomorrow, again, that could be a much different concern, especially if you have any outdoor plans. And Friday night football also looks like it could be something a little bit more unique and interesting because of the shift in weather coming our direction. We've got a cold front. doesn't look like severe weather heading our way, but there is still going to be that possibility of giving us, again, some uh, interesting conditions out across the area as we get into the rest of the forecast. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's take a look at what going on in the tropics for right now. Again, we don't have much of anything happening specifically. We're still watching this thing wandering off the, co the coast of Nicaragua and eventually going to be making its way up and over toward the Caribbean and parts of Cuba. Good news at this point in time, it is not a threat to the United States specifically. Although if you are heading to Florida, you're going to have to watch out for this as we get into the course of the rest of the next couple of days. Again, this is mainly just a disorganized mess of showers and thunderstorms, but the good news at this time is that it looks like this system as far down to the south as we have seen it so far is going to be making its way back up and to the north and to the eventually the east going across Cuba. Unfortunately, it could take it as far north as the Keys and into around portions of areas close to around Miami. So that could be a bit of a concern uh, out there into the rest of the forecast out there for tonight. So if you have any plans for travel, this could be uh, something to take a look at uh, into and around the rest of the area if you are going to be heading up toward around Florida for the next couple of days. Earthquakes in the Mid-South, not that much going on and doubtful again, hopefully, that we're going to be seeing anything out of that. Hopefully it stays that 
underway, but uh, so far not seeing anything in the way of earthquakes in the last uh, 24 hours. One yesterday just to the north of Dyersburg up around Tiptonville, but beyond that really just not that much happening at this point in time. Let's go ahead and get into what's going on with the forecast here in the Mid-South area. As we go into tonight, midnight, our new cold front will be arriving, and that's where we may start to see some showers popping up as high pressure and low pressure working together bring a little bit more moisture into the area. And that's where we could again see the potential of some more showers out there for late tonight. Now by dawn patrol tomorrow morning, that really starts to give us again the potential for some more rain. And it looks like some thunderstorms in the red hatched area heading up this direction. So this could be something that we definitely need to keep our eyes on for the time being. By the time we go into around lunchtime, that'll be the extent, the highest extent of getting anything in the way of showers and thunderstorms out into this direction. Doesn't look like anything severe just yet. But again, this is something that we will uh, are, are going to watch as we head into tomorrow. So that's something that we're going to need to, again, be paying attention to. So far, again, it does not look like severe weather. But as the system begins to clear the area, it will be sticking around into around portions of the area toward about Friday night and to around early portions of the early morning hours of Saturday. And that is going to, again, be uh, the main concern for right now that we see some problems here with this. By the time we hit early Saturday morning, the rain has started to clear the Mid-South area, and that's going to be about all that we see out there. Yes, that is some purple mixed in with that, and that is some snowfall that we are seeing into around Kentucky and Indiana, not seeing any concern for us. And by the time we go towards Saturday night, high pressure reasserts itself and things look a lot quieter into the Mid-South as we go into the rest of the weekend. Unfortunately, could be signs of another storm system heading our way as we get into next week, starting to brew up around the Cascades and the Pacific Northwest. Could that be a problem for trick-or-treaters? We will definitely be watching that for a while. Back to the Northwest Plains states, we do have, again, a decent amount of activity going on uh, into around northwestern areas of Minnesota for tonight, but not that much else going on. But that's how much cold air is heading down our direction at this time, and we'll continue into that area. But so far, little, if anything, taking place, again, directly for the Mid-South area for right now. Temperatures of concern at this point, you can see, again, that very very cold air sitting well back on up to our north and that's going to be heading down our direction into the next several hours. It's actually going to be arriving as we get into around Friday. So as we get into late tonight, early tomorrow morning, that's where we see that cold air start to stack up north of us. We may get some nicer temperatures into tomorrow by maybe just a little bit. And then by tomorrow night, afternoon and evening, the colder air really starts to arrive. And we see, again, the potential for some much cooler weather heading down our direction. Uh, that's at MeteoEarth.com if you'd like to check out more about that there. Possibility of frost across the Mid-South tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. This could be a killing frost for a good portion of the area. So if you have plants outdoors you want to protect, now would be the time to start making plans to make certain they are taken care of, and it is a possibility we could see the wildfire danger continue into the Mid-South as we get into around the early portions of the area in and around Friday afternoon. So again, cigarette butts in the car. Let's make certain that we're taking care of everything properly there. Give me just a second to reload everything going on on my Facebook page for just a minute as we have, uh, for some reason, the comments section is not getting through on my phone as I'm simulcasting this on my phone system. So I'm just stopping by to see uh, if anybody's making any comments just yet. Sharon Roll, thanks for stopping on by. But uh, so far, it doesn't look like anything specifically going on in the way of comments just yet. Both happy and sad about that for right now. Currently, into the rest of the area for today, high temperatures in the high 70s to lower 80s. Low temperatures tonight in the mid to upper 50s or so. And winds, again, will be bringing in enough moisture for the possibility of showers as we go into around early tomorrow morning. Could be a bit of a problem there. Now, temperatures into around, say, 10 o'clock tonight, 60s in Tupelo, 40s in Jonesboro, and could be seeing some of that cooler air making its way on into the, much of the area. But as we get into around the area, my computer would work. That would very well help. Thank you very much. Getting cranky here. Temperatures, the computer, not me. This is where we see, again, temperatures back in the 50s as this storm system starts off the area into tomorrow. Now, tomorrow morning's temperatures a bit brisk back in the lower 40s. By the time you hit the bus stop and the kids head to the school bus, 
But as we go into tomorrow afternoon and evening, that's when the temperatures really start to slide by just a little bit. And that's as that cold front makes its way uh, into the Mid-South area. So Donna Kelsey Faulkner, rain tomorrow afternoon. Uh, yes, unfortunately, that's what we're looking at for right now. Rainfall chances begin overnight, continue into the area through tomorrow afternoon. So picking up the kids from school could be seeing some problems there. Winds are going to be the main story at this time. Notice the arrows here coming in out of the southwest at about 7, 8 o'clock, and then as we go into the rest of the day, that cold front heads through the Mid-South about noon, and then the colder air from the northwest takes over. Could be a breezy day tomorrow, 10 to 15 miles per hour winds, and then could be seeing some areas of the Mid-South pick up to around 20 miles per hour at times. Again, doesn't look like a huge amount of wind, but it will be noticeably breezy, and there will be chances of rain out there. So by the time you get ready to head the kids home from school, 4 o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow, we can see temperatures of 60 degrees down toward Tupelo, but mid-40s around I-4. Northwest Mississippi, and then back into the lower 40s around Union City, back toward Jonesboro. So a big temperature difference is coming our direction as we get into the rest of the day tomorrow as that front slices its way on through. Lows Friday night, lower 30s across a good section of the area. So again, frost, possibility of widespread conditions there. Rain will continue right on into Friday night football tomorrow night, going back into around the temperatures into the lower 40s. So expect showers, breezy conditions, and the possibility of some very cool weather out there. Now that's the air temperature expected at 7 o'clock tomorrow, lower to mid 40s. Taking a look at the winds, combining that, by the time the football games kick off tomorrow, remember this is late October after all, we could see wind chills tomorrow back into the mid to upper 30s as the games start. As the games finish up, some of those wind chills can drop into the mid to lower 30s, so please keep that in mind if you're heading out the door uh, into tomorrow afternoon and evening for Friday night football. Highs on Saturday, highs only in the lower to mid 50s. Low temperatures Saturday night going back into around the lower 30s, even some upper 20s up around Jackson, Tennessee, and high temperatures on Sunday going back into around the mid-50s, lower 50s around Union City into that area. So we could see some fairly cool conditions out there. Uh, Chad Berkeley, start time for rainfall. Looks like it is going to be late tonight, uh, according to the computer models at this time. Not much expected until about after midnight, and then the potential exists for some rain developing west of the Mississippi and heading down to the east, overspreading the area. So your commute to work tomorrow at about 7 o'clock in the morning could be looking at the possibility of some more showers out there. And through about 1 o'clock in the afternoon, the R's on the screen indicate just the possibility of rain. If there was any thunder expected, it would say R slash T. And so far, it doesn't have that. So we don't see anything in the way of uh, major amounts of rain mixing with thunderstorms. I would not be surprised. A couple of the computer models out there are showing the potential of maybe a rumble of thunder, so I would keep an eye on that into tomorrow just to be on the safe side if you are traveling. Either way, if the kids are heading to school tomorrow, rain expected as we go into the overnight period, and temperatures at the bus stop will be deceptively mild, starting off in the mid to upper 50s or so. Mr. Berkeley, you're very welcome. Thanks a lot for stopping by and watching the show. Now, the temperatures tomorrow at 7 o'clock again for the kids going to school, not bad. That's at about 7 o'clock in the morning, and notice that in Memphis, they're near about 60 degrees. Look at what happens as we get to in the Again, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Picking up the kids from school, temperatures will be on their way downwards, and it could be, again, a bit on the brisk side for the kids waiting outdoors in shirt sleeves, so please keep that in mind. We also see, again, the potential of those showers uh, starting to develop late tonight, and then the heaviest activity appears to be just west of us as of about lunchtime tomorrow and then moving into the area as a large line of showers, two large lines of showers develop, the weaker one down around Tunica, southeast Arkansas, and then another one a little bit more potent from Little Rock back to around the Boot Hill. That is going to all move its way to the east-southeast and more chances of rainfall into and around the area to give us some more problems there. But so far, the good news is that we do not have anything taking place according to the Storm Prediction Center when it comes 
comes to anything involving uh, severe weather. We'll definitely keep our eyes on that for you as we go throughout the rest of the rest of the week and into the early part of the weekends. Uh, Alan Lindgren, I feel you. It would be nice to have a few of those storms out there. Uh, haven't had a chance to go get some good lightning pictures myself anytime soon. So one of these days would be nice to get that picked up and check out Alan's pictures on Facebook if you have not had a chance to do so for all of the uh, folks watching on Periscope and Twitter for tonight as well. Some very good storm photography there. Uh, into the rest of the area, we uh, for the when we talk about the solar system. Not that much going on at this point in time. We do have a solar wind blowing past the Earth from a hole in the coronal uh, layer of the sun, and that's causing some auroras, just not for us at this time. If you'd like to know more about this stuff, go to spaceweather.com. Great place to go to for more information. Uh, being prepared is one of those things that you want to make certain that you're all taken care of on various fronts. There are Skywarn meetings being taught tonight in Parsons, Tennessee. There are more of them coming up. We'll talk more about that coming up later on this weekend. Uh, also opportunities to be prepared. Shelby County Office of Preparedness at staysafeshelby.us. Great place to go to for training and exercises, especially for things like community emergency response team training. Great opportunity for that. Now, according to uh, Shelby County Office of Emergency Management, and this is something that I wish that we didn't have to uh, pass along, and they're Jessica Renee Allman. Welcome to the show, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, the current uh, offering from the Office of Preparedness is for an active shooter training uh, awareness situation, what to do, and I really wish we didn't have to talk about this stuff, but uh, if you would like to know more about this, if you would like to get involved, knowing what to do beforehand is something that might quite possibly save your life. It is something to consider and definitely something to take a look at along with many other courses that are available from Shelby County, and this is just one of the things that you can do to take a look and train Training will be available uh, from Shelby County uh, Active Shooter. They'll be coming up on the November the 9th at 7 p.m. or November the 18th at 9 p.m. You have to register for this, and the form is on Google Docs to where you can get more information about signing up for the course, which will be taken and taught at 1075 Mullen Station Road, Building C, on two different dates. To get there, all you have to do is go to the Office of Preparedness for Shelby County, and that's at staysafeshelby.us and there's many other training systems and classes that they offer. So if you'd like to know more about that, great opportunity to learn more from Shelby County on there as well. Also, don't forget to stop by uh, the Rainforest site. Click on one button, and you can protect rainforest habitat at about maybe 11 square feet per click per day. And all of us doing that can help to preserve very much needed rainforest space. If you'd like to know more about that, go to the rainforestsite.greatergood.com and you can find out more about how you can help out on that. Currently on Facebook, thanks a lot for everybody for dropping on by for just a little bit. Uh, more information for my Twitter and Periscope users at facebook.com slash austinonicwreg. And for those of you who are on Twitter, here's something I was hoping to show everybody. Uh, this is what it looks like from Carl Jones uh, tweeting from areas around northwestern Minnesota, looking a lot more like January out there as that storm system rounds the corner out of Canada and heads down into the United States. This is the weather that it was developing into around that portion of the country. So thank you, Mr. Jones, for passing that along. And thanks to Mr. Reed Timmer, storm chaser extraordinaire, for uh, passing that along as well. But uh, nothing we're going to be expecting anytime soon, but definitely does give you an idea as to what winter looks like. And it is coming. Uh, once again, if you'd like to see more about that, all you have to do is go to my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore WREG3 for more on that. More tips, information, stuff like that coming up in the next couple of days. Learn some new things to do with this OBS software, so we'll be doing more about that. More of our seven-day forecast. For those of you who did not get the forecast, you can always rewind and watch it, or you can go straight here for this graphic. Uh, more information about our seven-day forecast available at WREG.com 
youtube.com slash weather for more information. I'll be bringing you more details on the forecast coming up into tomorrow morning. Join me for Friday's edition with News Channel 3's forecast on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio with Bob and Josh. If you can't listen on air, listen online at talkbacklivenetwork.org. Sports for the most part, but also local events, news, and also, of course, weather. And I'll be on there every once in a while talking about science and all kinds of other stuff on that. And throughout the weekend, if you can't watch on TV or get us on the computer, listen on the radio, Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3. Great opportunity to learn more about the forecast while you're out and about into the Mid-South throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. That's going to do it for me for tonight. Uh, wrapping things up a little early. Got to be up tomorrow morning a bit earlier, so giving this a, a bit of a shot early on for the evening hours, and we'll keep you updated as to what's going on. Jim Jaggers has your forecast in almost exactly two hours. Time is 8 o'clock exactly as we wrap things up here. And, of course, I'll have more coming up tomorrow morning on a brand-new weather overtime, same time, same channel. So stay tuned for more on that. Live and direct from somewhere in Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook for tonight's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. <laughs>